So this is Kuta's Simplifying Rational Exponents, numbers 9 through 16. The instructions are to simplify, right? And they also say your answer should only contain positive exponents with no fractional exponents in the denominator. All right, so let's do number 9. We have 2m squared times 4m to the 3 halves times 4m to the negative 2. So we're multiplying, so these are three terms being multiplied. Um, remember that um, multiplication can happen in any order. And this is just 2 times m squared times 4 times m to the 3 halves times 4 times m to the negative 2. So there's multiplication happening here as well, right? So any order means we can multiply the coefficients 2 times 4 times 4, right? I'm just pulling the coefficients. And then the terms m squared times m to the 3 halves times m to the negative 2 separately. So I can do these in this order, right? 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. M, so these all have m as the base. So that means we add all the exponents. So it's going to be 2 plus 3 halves plus negative 2, okay? And before you worry about changing the base in, when you add these, well, you have a 2 and a negative 2 here. They are going to cancel out, so you're left with 32m to the 3 halves power. Okay, so that's number 9. And now let's go on to number 10. Number 10, we have 3b to the 1 half times b to the 4 third power. 4 third power. Okay, yeah. so here... We have coefficient 3, and we don't have one here, so we know that's a 1. So let's put the coefficient 3 in front and then put the b's at the end. Okay, so we know two b's raised to different powers. We just add those exponents. Okay, so this problem just becomes, well, can we add 1 half and 4 over 3? Okay, so easy way to do this is to find the common denominator um, since they're different. Right now, let's just multiply this one times this denominator is 2. So let's do 2 over 2, so it's not changing the value because 2 over 2 is 1. And this one by 3 over 3. So that's equal to 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 4 times 2 is 8, 3 times 2 is 6. So we can add the numerators now that we have the same denominator. So that's 11 over 6. So this we did on the side just so we can add the fractions for our exponent. So 3b, and this we know is 11 over 6. Okay? And we are done with number 10. So let's go on to number 11. We have p to the 3 halves to the negative 2 power. All right. So this one... What can we do? We can just multiply p 3 halves times negative 2, right? That's one way we could do this. When we do that, we get p to the 3 halves times negative 2. Well, this is over 1. This becomes negative 6 over 2. And that's equal to p to the negative 3, right? But remember, we want only positive exponents. So let's put that in the denominator, making it positive, right? Because we, this is over 1, so we can move it down in the denominator if we make the exponent positive, okay? And we don't have any fractional exponents, so we're good. So this is number 11. All right, let's go on to number 12. Number 12, similarly, this is just, we can do this quickly, it's 1 half times 3 halves, right? And that's equal to 3 times 1 is 3, 2 times 2 is 4. All right, and that is it for number 12 because it's positive and we don't have any denominator here, so we're good, right? Let's go on to 13. So number 13 starts off with 2x to the negative 7 over 4 divided by 4x to the 4 third power. Okay, so we can simplify the coefficients here, right? 2 over 4 we know is 1 over 2. 
like 1 half. So this can be written as negative x to the negative 7 over 4 over 2x to the 4 over 3. Right? And I can write 1 here, but I don't need to because 1 is implicit without it. All right. So now in order to combine these two x's, I need to move either the one in the numerator down or the one in the denominator up. So since the one in the, num in the numerator is negative, let's move it down. So now I need to put the 1 there instead. I have 2x to the 4 thirds times. And since I'm bringing it down, I have to change the power to be positive 7 over 4. Okay? So now this problem becomes adding fractions because this is equal to 1 over 2 to the x to the power of 4 over 3 plus 7 over 4. Right, when we have the same base, we can combine them by adding the exponents. So 4 over 3 plus 7 over 4. What is that equal to? Well, if we multiply by 3 over 3 here and 4 over here, here, 4 over 4 here, we're going to get a common denominator of 12, right? Because this doesn't change this one and this doesn't change that one because this is 1 and this is 1. So 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 3 is 12. 7 times 3 is 21, 4 times 3 is 12. So that's equal to 1 over 2 to the x, I mean 2x to the power of, oops, I did not add them, 16 plus 21 is 37 over 12. So 37 over 12 power. Okay? So this is only positive exponents and no fractional exponents in the denominator. Well, we have a fractional exponent in the denominator, and that's fine, okay? This is really simplified. Um, if we want to go ahead and not get a fractional exponent in the denominator, let's go ahead and do that, but you are not expected to do that. But let's, let's go and look at how to do that if we wanted. So if we wanted a whole number in the denominator, we have to look at, well, what is... So let's make this as one bubble of work. Another bubble bubble of work is 37 over 12. That's equal to what whole number? Well, we know that's equal to 12 goes into 37 three times, right? 12 times 3 is 36, and we have plus 1 over 12. So another way I could write that is 36 over 12 plus 1 over 12, right? And that's equal to 37 over 12, and that's gives us 3 plus 1 over 12, right? Another way we could write this is, well, if we increase 3 by 1, it's going to be 4. So if we get 4, it's going to be 48 over 12. But now we're going to have to subtract 48 minus what is equal to 37? Um, 48 minus what equals to 37? So we're going to have to find out, well, if, we, if that's 11, right? 48 minus 11 equals to 37. So if that's 11, this is going to be true. So that's equal to 48 divided by 12 is 4 minus 11 over 12. Okay? So why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I can break up this exponent, 37 over 12, to be 3 plus 3. 1 over 12 or 4 minus 1 over 12. Okay, and I wanted to make it this one because let me show you why. Because if I make this 2 to the x, 2x to the power of 4 minus 11 over 12, I'm able to split this apart, right? This split apart is 2x to the 4 times x to the power of negative 11 over, let me write it real neatly, negative 11 over 12 right? Negative 11, so when we combine it, it's equal to that. So this is just like uncombining it, right? And then I can move this up by making the exponent positive. So that becomes 11, I mean, x to the positive 11 over 12 divided by 2x to the fourth power. And now this satisfies the requirement to have only positive exponents and no fraction in the exponents in the denominator, right? There's a fraction exponent in the numerator, but that's okay.
All right. But again, this answer is most simplified for us. Um, but this is how you can follow the instructions exactly if you want. Um, and we're going to have a few chances to practice. Okay, so let's go on to number 14. 14, here we have 4x squared over 2x to the 1 half. Okay, again, we can look at the coefficients in front, and we know 4 over 2 is going to just be 2, right? So we have 2x squared over x to the 1 half. All right, and this time, I, to combine these, I'm going to move this one into the numerator. So that's going to be 2 times x squared times x to the negative 1 half. And this is all over 1. But I don't even need to write this over 1 because that's implicit, right? And so I can combine these two x's by adding the exponents. This is negative 1 half, right? So what is 2 plus negative 1 half? Well, 2 plus negative 1 half, let's get a common denominator. This is over 1. So let's multiply this side by 2 over 2 and this side by 1 over 1. Well, that doesn't change that side. This becomes 4 over 2 plus negative 1 over 2, right? So now we can add these and we get 3 over 2. So that's equal to 2x to the power of 3 over 2. All right, and that satisfies positive exponents only, and we don't have a, a denominator here other than 1 implicitly, so there's no negative exponents in the denominator. All right, let's go on to 15. 15, we have 3x to a power times 3x to another power times y to a power divided by 3y to a power. Okay, so here, first of all, we can deal with the coefficients alone. So let me move them, this one here, this one here. Let me move it to the front, right? And then we have x to the negative 1 half, x to the positive 1 half, y to the negative 1 third, and let me bring this y to the negative 7 fourths into the numerator by making it y to the positive 7 fourths, okay? And this is multiply, not 33. All right. So what we can see here, we can combine the two x's by adding the exponents and combine the two y's by adding the exponents. So they have the same base. And 3 times 3 divided by 3, well, 3 divided by 3 cancels out, so we're just left with 3x. Now add the exponents, 1 half plus negative 1 half plus half times y, negative 1 third plus 7 fourths. All right? Well, negative 1 half plus 1 half. Well, what is negative half plus half? That's equal to 0. So that's 3x to 0, y. What's negative 1 third plus 7 fourths? Again, we need a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply this one by 4 over 4, because this one's over 4, this one by 3 over 3, and that's equal to negative 4 over 12 plus 21 over 12, right? And I just add the numerators. Negative 4 plus 21 is 17, and keep the denominator, so it's to the power of 17 over 12. And what is x to the 0? Anything to the 0 power is 1. And 3 times 1 is 3, so we have 3y to the 17 over 12 power. All right, this satisfies both conditions, so we are done. Let's move on to number 16. Number 16 is 3y to the 1 fourth power divided by 4x to a power, y to a power, times 3 times y to a power. So again, let's move the coefficients into the front, so we have 3, and then we have 4 times 3 here. And let's move, let's move all these terms into the numerator. So we have y to the 1 fourth. To move this one up, it becomes x to the positive 2 thirds. To move this one up, it becomes y to the negative 3 halves. And to move this one up, it becomes y to the negative 1 half. Okay? So let's simplify this. 3 over th these cancel out, so I'm just left with something over 4. We can combine 
the, the y terms by adding the exponent. So we have x to the 2 thirds here. And then y, we add 1 fourth plus negative 3 halves, right? Plus negative 1 half. All right. So what's left is just adding these exponents. And we are going to have 1 fourth plus negative 3 halves plus negative 1 half, right? So how do we get a common denominator? Well, if we multiply 2 over 2 here, that's going to make this 4. We want a common denominator and 2 over 2 here. That's going to be 4. So that's going to be 1 fourth plus multiply negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 over 4 plus negative 2 over 4. Add those together, we get negative 7 over 4. Okay, so that's equal to x to the 2 thirds times negative y to the negative 7 over 4 power over 4. All right, so this is a good simplified answer. But again, um, to get the instructions say only positive exponents and no fractional exponents in the denominator. So to make these only positive, we need to move this to the denominator, the y power. So we have x to the 2 thirds times or divided by 4 y to the positive 7 fourths power. And now though we have a fractional exponent in the denominator that we want to get rid of. So to get rid of this, again we have to realize that 7 over 4 is equal to, what is it equal to? We know it's equal to um, 4 over 4 plus 3 over 4 right, which is just 1 plus 3 fourths. It's also equal to 8 over 4, right, minus 1 over 4, right, because then we still get that, which is 2 minus 1 fourth, okay? So if we use this one here, it's going to allow us to have a whole number exponent in the denominator and then push up the fraction to make that positive fraction in the numerator. So that's x to the 2 thirds over... 4y to the power of 2 minus 1 fourth, right? x to the 2 thirds over 4. And we can separate this. This is the same thing as y squared, y to the negative fourth, right? Because when we combine it, we get this again. And we can push this up by making it a positive 1 fourth. Oops positive one-fourth, and we get 4y squared in the denominator. Okay, so you can answer this one with this or this, or if you want to be complete about the instructions, you can get this answer here. Okay, so this is the last problem in, um, in our sequence 9 through 16.